Have you ever wondered why most Solana addresses start with either a digit or a capital letter A to H? Do you know why that is? I do, and in today's video we're gonna have a look at that. Welcome to another episode of Andy's Having Fun with Encodings. So the short answer is, it's because of base 58 encoding. <laughs> but I'm not a guy who gives short answers. <laughs> I'm gonna do a deep dive on encodings today. Hopefully in a way that also people who did not study computer science understand what I'm saying. So yeah, today we're gonna talk about encodings. Let's get started. Okay, first question, what even is an encoding and why do we use that? What's that good for, right? Let me get that a bit bigger. So encodings are almost everywhere. And maybe let's get started with one of the most basic encodings, ASCII. ASCII? ASCII. 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 <laughs> ASCII encoding. Okay, which is a text encoding. So text, you know, letters like A. If I run this, it will just print me the letter A. Okay, cool. But if I now say buffer from, then I lock the buffer. Ah, let's just lock the entire buffer because we're gonna work a lot with buffers today. First, let's print the letter and then print the buffer. So we get A and we get buffer 41. That's already one step further than I wanted to go with this. Buffer, can I get? Give me the first byte, please. There we go, that's what I wanted. Okay, so we have a letter A and we put it into this buffer. This automatically encodes it and then we get the first element in this buffer because there's only one because it's just one byte. And then suddenly it's a 65. That's the decoded representation of the letter A. Well, it depends what you see as decode and encode. But if you see ASCII as the encoding, then 65 is the decoded value. So essentially what we're doing here is we're saying that the letter A has the value 65, such that we can represent letters with numbers. That's essentially all that ASCII is trying to do because computers deal with numbers and not with letters. Specifically, they even deal with binary numbers, so just ones and zeros, and we can also get there. We can define radix for converting numeric values to strings. If I were to use two here, so base two, then the string representation would be this. That's ones and zeros, right? So that's how the computer stores this value A. Important to note here, those three things are all the same. This binary number, how it's in memory in the computer, represents this decimal number, which we print if we treat it like a number, which represents the capital A. This bit code here, by the way, is chosen on purpose, so that's the first letter. And what we saw earlier with the 40 something, the 41, I think, yeah, four, four and one, that was hex encoding. So if the radix was 16, so a base 16 number, then it would be 4, 1. 64 plus 1, or this bit and this bit. Those four things, again, all the same, just different encodings. ASCII, decimal, binary, hexadecimal. You can follow so far? Now, it might already be obvious why we want to use encoding and not just ones and zeros. Well, because it's much easier to read for us. When we're dealing with numbers, a 65 is much nicer to read than this string. And if we're dealing with, you know, text, then the actual letters are much easier for us to read than this stuff. So obviously we want to see the encoded text and not the binary stuff. If we have the letter B, for instance, then guess what it will be? Well, yes, 66. So that's the next letter. And in ASCII encoding, all the letters are after each other. So the B is one after the A, so it makes sense to put it at 66. Binary that's represented as one, zero, 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 one, zero. So here we have the two in the end. So four and two in hexadecimal. And those are all just 
different encodings for the same thing. And we can switch from one to the other. By the way, fun fact, also the one is in the ASCII table. It's at decimal place 49. So that's one, one, zero, 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 one, or three, one in hexadecimal. The lowercase a is also in the ASCII table. Guess where that's gonna be? No, not 26 after the capital A, which might make sense, but they made it more important to have similar bit sequences. So it's gonna be at 97. Let me check if I got that correct. Yes, because they wanted to have one, one, zero, 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 one, such that the only difference between capital A and lowercase a is this one bit. So I can flip this bit to make the A a capital A or vice versa. Yeah, so that's, that's a simple text encoding. And of course, for now we were just using a letter. Let's do an entire string, hello Andy. So I'll print the entire buffer, hello Andy. And the standard way how the buffer does the two string is by representing everything as hexadecimal, such that we always have exactly two characters per byte. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten characters. So we have 10 bytes, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And we see again, the H is the four, eight in hexadecimal, then lowercase e is the six, five, and so on and so on and so on. The 20 is the space. And then the A, we've seen this before, is the four, one in hexadecimal. So this is the hexadecimal encoding of this string. I can do a two string and then tell the encoding, haha. -ha. So I'm just gonna convert it back to ASCII and then I should get hello Andy back. So we convert from text to bytes back to text. Yeah, there we go. Converted this to this buffer and back to this. So encodings, we can encode and decode. Do I have a real world example for this? Morse code, for instance, is another encoding where basically you represent letters into sequences of long, short, and breaks. SRS, for instance, would be three short, three long, and three short. That's the one thing that I still remember. But let's be honest, um, we are probably too young for Morse code. My dad, however, he was sending messages with a flashlight to his friends. They were standing on the balcony and doing like light signals in Morse code. So they had the words they wanted to send with the individual letters. My dad was thinking of something, then encoding it in Morse to send those signals with the flashlight. And then his friend on the other balcony was seeing the light and then he could decode it again and figure out what my dad wanted to tell him. So that's encoding and decoding. And the same thing we do here. We encode some letters into numbers such that the computer can transfer it. So whenever a text is stored, really what's stored is bytes, but those bytes represent text. They could also represent numbers or represent an image. It all just depends on the encoding, whether that thing is a text or a bunch of numbers or part of a video, it's just a question of encoding. So yeah, Morse code, do I have something more relatable? One more thing for the Morse code, because we're all too young to remember that, but maybe you remember the that notification tone from the very old, like Nokia devices, those prick phones. That pattern is also Morse code. Three long, two short, three long is S M S, short messaging system. Back in the days, that's how we sent texts. Texts, do you still remember those? Yeah, anyway, encodings. We encode something such that we can use another channel to transmit it. And in terms of ASCII, we encode the letters as numbers. Let's talk about bases. We've already touched upon this. We can represent the same number differently. So for instance, let's start with number one. Let's do binary, octal, decimal, and hexadecimal, which for number one actually does literally not make a difference. It's all one. 
Hmm, okay, cool. What if we have number two? And what does that even mean? Binary. Binary or base two has only two possible values for each digit. Is digit the right word? For each like space, zero and one. So the zero would be zero, the one is one. And then as soon as we have the two, we need an additional character here, an additional digit to represent the two. So the two in binary will be one zero. And for all the other encodings, it's still two. Let's take the eight which in octal or base eight, because we have eight possibilities per digit. What does digit mean? Is, is digit specifically zero to nine or is digit one space in number? My English is not good enough. So what would happen if we have the eight in octal? Well, the same thing as what happens with the two in binary, we only have zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven in octal to represent numbers, which are eight possibilities. And as soon as we have the eight here, which is the ninth number starting at zero, we need to have one more digit. So we have the one and zero again. So the eight represented in octal is one zero. I did not save that. There we go, one zero. And in binary, that would be one zero zero zero. So binary, this is two to the power of zero, which is one, two to the power of two, which is two, two to the power of three, which is four, two to the power of four, which is eight. So we have eight. And the same thing here, eight to the power of zero, which is one, zero times one, plus eight to the power of one, which is eight, which makes a total eight. That's how you can calculate it here. That's just basic, what are those called? Those are not called encodings now. Those are representations, number formats, I guess. And then at 10, by the way, you know that the one zero is the first number that needs two digits in base 10 or decimal. That's what we're all used to. So I'm not even gonna bother. But decimal is interesting for the fact that 10 is not a power of two. 2, 8, and 16 are. That's why the 10 in decimal has not a clean represent or just a 1, 0, 0, 0 in some other representation. And now we already see in hexadecimal, hexadecimal still has characters for representing the 10 because hexadecimal goes with 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. That's the 10 numbers, the first 10. And then it has A, B, C, D, E, and F to have 16 possible characters for one digit. Still wondering if digit is the right name here. You know what I'm talking about, right? Let's just, I'm just gonna pretend that digit is the right word here. Anyhow, point is hex has the letters A to F additionally to the digits zero to nine to have 16 possibilities per digit. So we can represent up to 15 and still just have one digit in hex. There we go. That's the F or four ones in binary. That's the F. And as soon as we add one, we get to the 16, which would then be what? Correct, the one zero in hex. So 16 would be one zero in hex. We need another digit because we ran out in base 16. And again, here we also ran out of four bits. We need a fifth bit. And then when it gets interesting again is 255 because that's the largest number of one byte. That would be all ones. So eight ones or FF in hex. Why am I teaching you all of this? What's the point, Andy? Excellent question. Because now we can get to the base 58 or base 64. We can take that knowledge and apply it to base 58. What would that mean? Well, base 58 is just an encoding that has 58 possibilities for one digit. Remember how hex had 
16 possibilities. They took all the digits, 0 to 9, plus A to F. And now if we want to have 58 digits, we need a bit more. I'm gonna build myself a buffer again. And I'm just gonna use one byte for now. For now. Oh yeah, damn, you don't have a base 58 encoding. We can go base 64. I think it's called that. So what I did is I added base 58 and base 64. So let's start with a simple number again. One. One, and this is funny, it's all one, but in base 58, it's two. Isn't that confusing? No, it's not. Why? Well, because there is no zero. Maybe I should have said what the actual characters of base 58 are, because I didn't finish that thought. Remember how I said that hexadecimal had 0 to 9 and A to F? And then I wanted to go on with, well, to get to 58, we take all of the capital letters A to Z, plus all of the lowercase letters A to Z, plus all of the digits 0 to 9, and then we're at 62. And then we remove 4, which is the 0, capital O, capital I, and lowercase l, because they are often confused. Like the lowercase l and the capital I, they can be easily confused also with the one. And then the capital O and the zero, they can be confused because especially if you write it like that, that's they easily confused. So those four are just removed. So we are left with digits one to nine, capital A to capital Z without capital O and I and lowercase a to lowercase z without lowercase l. Those are 58 characters now that are used for the base 58 encoding. Cool, so one step back, the zero is always the zero, except in base 58, it's the one. If you wanna have the connection to Solana, the public key with all ones, so all zeros is the system program because the system program is at address zero. But we get to public keys in a second. And base 64 uses capital A's as the zero. In fact, base 64 encoding is yet another more complicated thing. We just put it here just for fun. So let's see. I'm gonna remove those. They're not really that relevant anymore. The nine, nine in decimal, is the nine in hex, is the capital A in base 58. I kinda wanna remove the base 64 because that might just be confusing you and I'm not really talking about it. But now I already have it here, I'm just gonna leave it. So then we have capital A to capital Z, which is plus 25 minus the two letters is 23. So nine plus 23 is 31. 31 is what I would expect base 58 to be the capital Z. Oh, nope, I'm one off. 32 is then the capital Z. Okay, then I would expect 33 to be the lowercase a. Yeah, and then we play the same thing. A to Z is 20 plus 25. Minus one because the lowercase l is missing is plus 24. So plus 24 would be 57, which is also coincidentally one lower as 58. And we're talking about base 58 because if we have 58 here, then guess what? We will need another digit. So 58, I would expect to be what would I expect it to be actually? I wouldn't expect it to be one because ones are not written if they're not there. So I would expect the next one to actually be two one. Let's see if I'm correct with that. Yeah, two one is base 58 for 58. We need another digit here. And if it's all just zeros, then it's all one. One, 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 two, one. Interesting, huh? So that's 58. And those are now pretty much the basics. I mean, I hope that you understand 
base 58 enough now that we can continue here and finally start talking about public keys. We can create ourselves import from web three and then here which is interested in the public key. Now, if I log my public key to base 58, guess what? I'm fairly certain that it will start with a number or a capital A to H. There we go. Capital F is between A and H. And that was not just a lucky guess now. We can do this several times and we will see. We can play this game 20 times and we will see that most of them will start with capital A to H or a number. 3, B, 5, D, 9, 3, 4, C, 7, 7, 7. There's a lowercase a, so this is an outlier. And what else can you tell me about this outlier? Do you see something else? It's shorter. It has one less character. Do you already get it? Maybe not. Not so important. We'll get there. Because those are all just random public keys, right? So I generate a new keeper, so this is random. But essentially what a public key is, is really just 32 bytes. So let's get ourselves a buffer again. Allocate 32 bytes. When I now create a new public key from this buffer, I can now lock this. And guess what that's gonna be? All zeros in bytes or in base 58, all ones. And that, my friends, is also the address of the system program. Maybe one more step into the a public key is just 32 bytes. So we can, instead of representing it with base 58, is we can represent it as individual bytes. So those are now 32 decimal values between zero and 255. And who would have thought they're all zero? So this is now a uint8 array with length 32. So again, 32 bytes. That's the base 58 res representation. That's the byte representation. Underlying is the same thing. So whether I write this or I write this is the same. It's just a question of encoding. You follow? Yeah, you're ready? This, is, this, is this making sense? Is it making sense? And this is the interesting thing, that also some really smart Solana devs seem to be struggling with. When they're asking me, why are some public keys that long and others are that long? I would expect 32 characters, but it's 44. I'm like, dude, have you heard of encodings? If not, watch this video. <laughs> I teach you everything very slowly because this could be a two minute video, but it's not. Cool, so that's if it's all zeros. Guess what would happen if it were all ones? Binary, binary all ones. So buffer, I'm just gonna borrow a loop and write 32 bytes. The byte is 255, so I'll write it with 255, 255, 255, 255. Guess how that's gonna look now. So this is the decimal representation of the individual bytes. I just wrote 255 in there. And now, drum roll please, da 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 da. Check. J E K. And a bunch of other random stuff. This, this is the highest possible Solana address, because it is the highest possible 32 byte sequence, namely all ones. So 32 times eight ones in binary. And in base 58, this. Now, J is the letter after H. So H is still there. Remember how base 58 started? We start with one, two, three, four, five, up until nine, then capital A, capital B, capital C, capital D, capital E, F, G, H. There is no capital I, there is an I in the alphabet. Granted, there is a capital I in the alphabet, but that's not in base 58. Capital I is not in base 58, which makes capital H the letter 
before capital J. And since E is relatively early on as well, well, because there's still just one to nine and then capital A to E. So that's why there are not that many addresses starting with capital J. There are more addresses starting with capital J than with capital K, for instance, because they can go up to capital E and still be there. Now, is all of what I'm saying here making any sense? I don't know. But what I'm trying to get at here is it's not that the Solana addresses suddenly stop at a certain amount, right? It's not like, because there is this curve, the E, I never remember its name, but it could be that those just doesn't have values beyond a certain point, And that just happens to be here with the J. No, that's not the case. The addresses are over the entire 32 byte spectrum. All of it, all of the bits are used. But because of the encoding, the base 58 encoding of those 32 bytes, the largest possible address starts with a capital J and has 44 digits. I'm gonna call them digits, even though there's also letters in there, but the letter in this case is a digit for me. Maybe I'm still off with the wording, but you get what I mean, right? So there are 44 of those characters, essentially, that represent this public key, which is a 32 byte number. And that should now answer why most of the Solana addresses start either with a digit one to nine or capital A to H because it stops at J. And if you want to have anything other than that, anything after capital J, including all lowercase characters, then essentially you need to get an address that only has 42 characters of representation in base 58. Let's do that with the 20 keys again. And if length is smaller than 44, then I'm also gonna print myself the bytes. And this time we were unlucky, none of the 20 addresses start with anything else than numbers or capital A to H. I'm also not sure about the one. The one is also special and I don't think a lot of addresses start with one. I think I also need to take the one out of this statement. I'm pretty sure. I don't think many addresses start with one actually. And again, no luck. So I'm having a lot of keys here, but none of them are here. Here we're a bit more lucky. So now we actually got three addresses. One that started with a lowercase d, one that started with an uppercase n, which is also not a to h, and one that started, this also started with a five, but it still has a length smaller than 44. So actually, and this is interesting to see here, the first byte is one. And that's what all of those three have in common actually. The first byte is very low. Here it's five, here it's nine. So the first byte is pretty low. It's not zero, but it's low enough that another base 58 digit is not used. So let's in fact do the opposite. Let's not get ourselves a pub key from a buffer, but a buffer from a pub key. And specifically, I want the address with 43 lowercase z's. Then I'm gonna put that address here. And then I'm gonna lock the public key. Actually, I'm just gonna lock the public key because that will log me the buffer as well. And the public key bytes as we had before. And let's see, this is fun. So that's stuff that I'm just enjoying to do. I could do that all day, learning about encodings. So the public key with all lowercase z's, 43 to be specific. Binary number dot 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 f f f f f f. Lower part here is all f's and then some other stuff. So here we all have 255, 255, 255. And then it starts getting different. 14, 
also relatively low. If I were to put 44 capital Z's, it would tell me that's not a pub key anymore, I think. Yeah, then it tells me invalid public key input because that's not a valid address anymore because it can't be converted to a 32 byte thing. It would need 33 bytes. So 43, let's do 42 and add What's the letter before Z, Y to compare with what we had before? Because I would expect that just the last byte is now 254, yes. What if we added plus one here? Then this would overflow, 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 and here we had 40. Let's see if I can get to that by 44 twos. Let's try what address that would be. Actually, it would need to be the public key with one, two, and then all ones because the rest should be zero. So one, two, and then 43 ones. That would be actually the, the next one in the row. And I think that's looking better now. Comparing this 14 ta 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 to 40 zero, 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 zero. Was that actually the same as we had previously? I think it was. Yes. 103, 39, 103, 40. So the two and 43 ones is the address right after 33 Z's. So that is the very point where it switches from 43 to 44 characters in public key length. And before we have a look at the ones, let me give you an analogy. If you still don't get it, why most of the addresses start with numbers or capital A to H, let me give you a simpler analogy that you should understand. Let's talk about bytes. I'm gonna print you the decimal representation of a byte. So you can think of the byte, byte value, think of this as a base 256 value. It's just one thing, the one byte, base 256. And I bring it to you in base 10. Suddenly I print it in decimal. What's gonna happen? Just gonna print it. Those are gonna be 256 numbers now. Write the, the numbers from zero to 255. Now let's pretend all of those numbers are like our public keys. And I ask this stupid question, hey, why do most public keys start with number one or number two? And then you'll be there scrolling through the list and being like, well, obviously the one is way more often and the two also quite often still, then all of the other ones, because for all of the other ones, the first digit essentially needs to be non-present. So there needs to be a zero one two or a zero zero nine or a double o seven. So the zeros are not written. And that's why if I want one of those numbers that start with seven, then essentially I have this one here and all of these ones here, but that's it. The rest starts with other characters. Whereas if I wanted one that starts with one, then I have this one here, all of these ones here, plus all of these ones here. That's another hundred here. Why? It's not that the byte doesn't use some other values. It's not that a byte is leaving them out, but that the representation that we used, which is decimal or base 10, just happens to have those two as the first characters and base 10 does not share the exponent with the base 256. So at 255, it ends. There are no... 300 something to represent the byte in decimal. If I were to use a different encoding like hex, 
then it would be more evenly distributed because hex does share the exponent, right? I can multiply 16 with something to get 256. Oh, no, nope, not multiply, but raise to the power of. And I need to raise it to the power of 2. 16 times 16, so 16 to the power of 2, is 256. So if I were to represent the bytes not in decimal, but as we had it in hexadecimal, then suddenly the thing would look different and it's more evenly distributed. We have all the Fs here, all the E, D, C, B, A, and the numbers. And then once more, the numbers with no first character, no first digit. So here it is fair, but if I represent it in base 10, then it's not so fair anymore because then the starting digit is way more likely to be a two or a one than it is to be any of the others. And that's the exact same thing that we're observing here with the public keys. It's just way more likely for a public key to start with two. And let's do a similar thing as we did here also with public keys, just for fun. Let's essentially just play with the first byte I overwrite the first byte again with this byte and then I print the 255 addresses. Then we will see a similar thing that we saw with the bytes, but now with actual public keys. Now those are now evenly spread public keys and they end at J-E-K. Again, our largest pub key. So here we have four with a J and then we have a bunch with the H, a bunch with the G, a bunch with the F, a bunch with the E, a bunch with the D, a bunch with the C, a bunch with the B, a bunch with the A, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2. And before the 2, and that's the interesting part now, and that's why there are also no 1s, before the 2, there is none. So there's the W, S, so here it's not like fine enough to get all of the characters, but we're starting with the lowercase letters. Then here we got the uppercase letters. And in the very beginning, we have one where it actually writes the one. That is the one where the entire byte is zero. And fun fact, this one again is longer. So when you have a one, it's again 44. And I wanted to look into this a bit more. I think I'm gonna give you a quick TLDR and save you the one hour of me figuring out what's up with the ones. I can tell you quite quickly. Let's get ourselves 32 random bytes, print them base 58. And then I'm gonna set the first byte to, I don't know, something low six. Then I'm gonna print that too. That will now look like this. We have an address and we have another address that is one shorter. So that's just 40, 43 digits now. Why? Because in the beginning, the first byte is so small. So one interesting thing we observe here. The second interesting thing we observe here is they don't look similar at all, even though 31 of 32 bytes are the same. But the encoding makes them look completely different. That's one of the disadvantages, I would say, of base 58. Whereas in hex encoding, you would immediately see that, right? My point here is that the leading zero is not displayed. The address just gets smaller. A zero in base 58, by the way, is a one because we don't have zeros. So the leading ones are not displayed. And because we don't display leading ones, we can use them for something else, to indicate something else. And base 58 uses leading ones to indicate that there is a full zero byte. So if that was completely zero, then we would have a leading one here, which is funny because now this one is the smaller address but we can run it again. This was just unlucky because it's a lowercase a. There we go. Now they're the same length. And we have a leading one to indicate that the entire first byte is zero. 
However, we still need the remaining 43 characters to represent the remaining bytes. If I had two zero bytes in front, then my address is starting to get smaller. So now I have one character less here in the end because having two ones, those ones are now not really base 58, like, like in the sense of they are base 58, but not in the sense of they represent one of 58 possibilities. In this case, it represents a one of 256 possibilities, namely that the entire byte is zero. So in a way, this is base 256 if you know what I mean, but it's still base 58. We call that base 58. Base 58 has that feature. And we can keep playing this game, adding another zero where we did not save anything as compared to before, but now we are not at an R, so one where there is no leading zero, but we are at a nine, which is, you know, the, the higher address. So if the nine was also an R, then we would already win a character. So if I run this again with a different address, we might already win another byte. We run it a few times because again, it's not that likely. There we go, now we have it. An X, so we saved another byte and we have two missing here. So it's now a 42 digit address because we have three leading ones. So this is now the same length as an Ethereum address from the character count. And you know, we can keep playing this game uh, until there is all ones when there's all zeros. When are there all zeros? Well, at the system program. Or in other words, the public key default. How many ones will there be? Well, of course, 32. Because there are 32 leading zeros. 32 full zero bytes and that my friend, is the smallest possible Solana address. Smallest in encoding, I mean, of course. The next bigger one would be the pub key where the rightmost byte is one and not zero. And now challenge for you, what would the address of that be and how many digits will it have? If you said 31 ones and then a two and then a one, then you are correct. No. Oh, I was wrong. Nice. I love it when I'm wrong because then I learn something. That's true because <laughs> the last byte is now not, we don't have 32 bytes and then a one, we have 31 bytes and then a one. So we have 31 ones and then the two, which represents a one. And we can play that up until 57, which is the lowercase z. And as soon as we have 58, then we get to the thing that I was already thinking of, which is we need another character. So we have two, one in the end here. And this repeats if we have more bytes, da -da -da -da, then we would fill it up to the left and the addresses would get bigger again. We start with just having the last byte set, then it's all ones and then 5q. Okay, then the last two bytes, last three bytes, and then we go up like this. So we get more and more stuff into our pub key until here we have one one for zero zero. And then with one zero, we just have the one and then we have the check. But let's get back here. As always, I hope that you learned something this time about encodings and you can explain why most of the Solana addresses start with 2 2 capital H. You might be like, well, that doesn't have any practical use cases to which I'm like, well, yes, it does. I mean, yes, it's very theoretical, but have you ever grinded yourself an address? Solana keygen grind starts with. Knowing what we know today lets us grind more efficiently, or at least if we search something, we know what we are more likely to find. For instance, I'm way more likely to find Andy than I am to find lowercase Andy. I'm gonna demonstrate this differently. It's the same thing, but I'm just gonna use two characters and grind a bunch more addresses to make this more clear. AN, I find a lot pretty quickly. So AN, I find bunch of key pairs, right? Pretty easy. Whereas 
lowercase a n, not that many. Now one, two, okay, three, four, yes. Not, it's definitely not as quick as this. The same is true if I search for Andy, it's much quicker than if I search for lowercase Andy. Even though it's the same number of letters, but with the lowercase, essentially, I need to have the first character free. So when using a capital A to H, I'm pretty much getting a free character in the grind. So that's a practical use case right here for you. So don't tell me that what we're talking about here doesn't make any sense in a practical way. Now we also said that. Good, go out and take that knowledge to new heights or whatever. Now that you understand base 58 encoding, I hope that you have an easier time developing on Solana because base 58 is a thing that we use quite a lot. Why do we like base 58? Well, because it's human readable and it's text-based. Therefore, it's pretty simple to, you know, put it in a text-based system, like copy it in a text chat or also put it as a URL parameter on an HTTP request. Because it is text, it's easy to be copied there. Encoding. Therefore, it's a bit longer than if we were just to use the 32 bytes to represent it. Instead of the 32 bytes, we will now need 44. So it's a bit longer because we're not using base 256, but base 58. But therefore it's text only, it's alphanumeric. And that makes it a lot nicer to handle. So all the signatures, all the public keys, that's all base 58 encoded. Underlying though, is just a bunch of bytes. And I hope that after today, you understand how that conversion works and why it all makes sense. And why most Solana addresses start with capital A to H or numbers two to nine. That's the answer. Base 58 encoding. Thank you so much for watching. Go check out the other videos, like and subscribe, and I will see you in the next video. Let me know what you want me to talk about next. I'm always open for ideas. Jacob was like, oh yeah, I can learn something if you talk about base 58. So here I am talking about base 58. You're welcome. Till next time.